Hi, it's David from Electric Teaching, and I'd like to show you how to graph linear equations from both slope-intercept and standard forms. So slope-intercept is when you have it, you'll know when you have it in the correct form for slope-intercept, the y value is all by itself, the y term is all by itself, isolated, and then you have mx plus b. m is the slope, where b is the y-intercept. The value that is multiplied to the x. A lot of times you want to say it with the x. Don't. The slope is the value that's multiplied to the x. And that's what I like to think of as rise over run. Remember, rise could actually be down sometimes. And I'll show you how I always keep run positive. Now, technically, I can mix it up a little bit, but try to keep that in mind. So slope is the rise over run, and that's the m value there. This is what we call, is, excuse me, not what we call, this is the y-intercept value. So if I plug in x equals 0, that means that's not left or right on a chart, on an xy grid. So if I say x is 0, I can get exactly the y-intercept by saying, by from the b value. Okay, and then standard form is often written as a x plus b y equals some number, some constant c value. Please do not think that the multiplied value here, a, on the x, is the slope, just like over here. Common misconception that every, when it's in this form, okay, people think that this is the slope, and that is not. For, it, for the value multiplied on the x to be representing the slope, it must be in slope-intercept form with y equal by it with the y term by itself okay so you could actually solve for y and figure out what the slope is in this form and that's sometimes an activity but not for now I'm going to show you how to graph these guys quickly and easily so this is in slope intercept form y equals 3 fourths x minus 2 the slope is right here it's the rise over run 3 over 4 the starting point this is very important the starting point's not always 0, 0. The starting point is given right here. This is a point on the graph. If x is 0, it means no left, no right, then y, read what's left. y is, this is 0, minus 2. So y is negative 2. That is y. That is the b value in the formula is the y-intercept. This is your starting point. From there, go up 1, 2, 3 and a run or over one two three four and that is the next or one of not the next there's infinite points between here as you might remember from geometry but if that is a point on the line so then i could try to draw a line through these points don't forget to put arrows because there's infinite points along here that make the equation true that's really important to recognize there are infinite x's and y points on this line that will make this equation true. Let's try another one. Negative 2x plus 1. Y equals negative 2x plus 1. First thing you want to know is that the slope is negative 2 over 1. I always tell my students to put the negative on the numerator. It makes your life a lot easier. Do not put it on both the numerator and the denominator, then it's negative divided by negative is positive. Then you've changed the slope. It's not the right slope. So only put it on the numerator. That's a really good habit all the way through calculus. Starting point plus 1. Starting point plus 1. So I'm going to start at, this is the point, x0, comma 1. But often we just say, hey, the y-intercept is 1, and we all agree that's this point, which is the xy-coordinate, 0, 1. From this point, not from origin or someplace else, from this point that is on this line, then drop down to, notice my rise is negative. Think of an elevator going down to, because this is vertical. One, two, and then a run of one. This is how I always keep my runs positive. Now let me see if I can use a line tool real quick. Let's see if I can get this to work here and draw a line that's through both those points. Still want to put arrows on top and bottom, so my line tool forgot the arrow on this side, so we'll put it in. Okay, when you get good at these, I'm hoping that you will be able to graph linear equations 
And honestly, don't get intimidated, about 10 seconds or less. So watch how I can do that. I'll probably go a little more than 10 seconds because I'll be explaining, but watch how fast we can do this. Y intercept, starting point, up three, one, two, three. I'm going to whoops, put a dot right there at three. Now, slope, put the negative on the numerator. Down one, positive two in the movement. Down one, positive two. We have two dots. You can draw a line with arrows. My lines are not exactly straight. They should be. If I had a ruler on this, I would use it. So that's what I mean by being able to graph in basically 10 seconds or less, especially in slope-intercept form. Obviously, if this was tricky numbers here in fractions, maybe a little longer. But if we're looking at real, you know, straightforward movements in our slope and our starting point, I'm hoping that you can do it that fast. As a teacher, I would hope so. Okay, over here, slope and wait, this is not slope intercept form. You might recognize that this is x and y on the same side. That's the standard form. So for standard form, I'm going to use what I call intercept tricks. Intercept tricks. So intercepts, I can't write very well with this pad yet. Hang on a second. Intercepts to graph. To graph. Watch what I mean. So, intercepts are, you have to remember this, intercepts are when x is 0, I will get the y-intercept. So, let me make that a little bit clear. I'll make a quick little table of points. Often, we start linear equations, learning linear equations with just points. If x is 0, I will get the y-intercept. I often teach students that if x is 0, you can actually pick up, you can actually cover up the x term. So I'm just going to use this little icon here, this union square here, to demonstrate this. So if I cover it up and solve for y, that's the y-intercept. So if I solve for y, divide by 2 on both sides, hopefully you see that somewhat easily. And then you can see that the y-intercept is 2. If I want to know the x-intercept, that is when y is 0. This is a huge concept that must be... Um, basically mastered to really have success at high school math. Intercepts are used everywhere, so this is a huge important trick, even with linear equations here. So if y is 0, if y is 0, that would be 2 times 0 here. And if it's 2 times 0, we really don't need it because it is 0. We can even try to cover up the plus sign too there. Now read what's left. x is, equal sign is the verb, is 4 x is 4. So now I have the x-intercept, which means I have two points. And how many points do we need to graph a line? Just two. Three makes it a little bit nicer, but two is all we need. So there's my two points. This is 0, 2, and 4, comma, 0. Okay, and then I could just simply draw in the line. Again, I'll just use this little line tool real quick. Try to draw on a line that hits it. I almost got him in. I almost got him in. All right, so a little arrow on here. want to be complete. Let's try two more real quick with standard form and intercepts, using intercepts. So, again, it's the idea for me is to cover it up. I need to grab my box. I lost my box. Get that box down here. Okay, so if x is 0, I'm going to get the y-intercept here. If x is 0... I'm going to get the y-intercept, and this time I'm just going to mark it. I'm just going to mark it. My y-intercept is, let's see, divide by negative 3 looks like a positive 2. Positive 2. My x-intercept is when y is 0. That means this term is just gone. And what's left? 2x equals negative 6. Divide by 2. If I divide by 2, then I'm going to get a negative 3x-intercept. Okay, and that was a little more than 10 seconds, but you sure get the idea of how fast this could be. Now, sometimes the numbers really just don't make pretty little integers when you divide, when you solve for them. For instance, over here, if x is 0, 3x is gone, because 3 times 0 is 0, and I'm going to be left with some sort of fraction here. And I don't want you to freak out, as long as it's not a terrible fraction. I mean, if I saw numbers in standard form, that were really ugly, like a 7 here, and then I'd have to d think about the y-intercept being 9 divided by 7. That would be tricky to find the exact point there. 
I only recommend doing the intercept trick when the numbers are what we like to call clean. So when I divide, and I, excuse me, when I solve for the x-intercept, I'm going to divide by 3. That's pretty clean. That's going to be a negative 3. And if I wish to solve, when x is 0, solve for the y, divide. Mm, 6 goes into 9 one and a half times. I think I can handle that. But again, if these numbers were not that pretty, when if I was to divide them, they came out to ugly fractions, I would, this is really important, you want to have several tricks up your sleeve, I would solve for y and put it in slope-intercept form. I would subtract the 3x on both sides, subtract the 3x on both sides, and it looks like later I'm going to divide by 6. I always tell my students to see the algebra before you really start diving into it. See it all the way to the end. So the two steps would be to divide, um, excuse me, subtract 3x, and then divide, let me get this right here, and then divide by 6. And you can see the slopes, negative 3 over 6. Hopefully you can see that's negative 1 half x. That's 3, 6, yep, negative 1 half. And then over here, the y-intercept is... We already kind of talked about it, 9 over 6, 9 over 6, and that, if you reduce it, is 3 over 2, or just to plot it, think of it as 1 and a half, and it's negative. So I could solve for y for any of these problems, but if the numbers are clean, and I need to graph them, clean as in they'll divide easily into each one, covering up trick, getting the y-intercept and x-intercept tricks is really a cool way of doing it. So let's double check this. Let's do the cover-up trick. If x is 0, if x is 0, y is, as we've said several times now, negative 1 and a half. So I'm going to go down negative 1 and I'm try to get halfway I think I can approximate. I think I can get the middle point there. I'm pretty confident most people can. Then if I cover up Y, the six, the, the y term, because y is 0, what's left? Well, x is going to be, divide by 3, looks like negative 3. So that would be a dot at the x-intercept at negative 3. And once you have two lines, once, excuse me, two, once you have two points, you can get a line, graph it right through. Try to use a better tool there. And again, always use arrows. Always use arrows. To, to emphasize these lines go on forever and ever and ever. Well, I hope that I have helped, and I hope that this has helped. I'm David from Electric Teaching. Thank you for listening.